With such big regulation changes, how do you go through the process in understanding the problem and the solutions for the new car? Well, it was an interesting journey. We started back in uh, 2017 when Liberty took over um, Formula One. We started to look at the current state of F1 um, aerodynamically in terms of car following car. It's an area which you never really look at in a team. There's no need. It's not part of your priorities. And it became quite clear quite early on that there was there's big numbers at play. You know, we were seeing. You, you, you can quite easily lose half of your downforce in, in a close following situation. Um, so it's not surprising that the drivers feel that and comment it. So really from there, we sort of went down the route of trying to deconstruct the cars. Once we'd assessed the magnitude of the, of, the, of the offsets and what we were looking at in terms of numbers, we started to deconstruct the cars to understand what's driving it. Um, and from there we came down to two main areas. One was the wake so the aerodynamic losses that come off of the front car, the lead car, and how they're presented to a following car. And secondly, the, the sensitivity of a, sec of a following car to that wake, because no matter what you do to the wake, you're always going to be driving through some disturbed airflow. So that was the two strands of development. One is improving the wake from the lead car, and two, making the car less sensitive to driving through disturbed flow. And really, over the course of the year since then, we've been evolving various um, geometries to kind of address those problems. Different concepts, we've been very open-minded about where to look. We've tried all different kinds of skirt cars and you know, all going through history. Um, there's not been a magic era, we don't think, of where cars were aerodynamically very, very downforce laden and followed each other very well. We never really saw that, certainly not in our um, research. But we were able to capture some features which are particularly bad in those conditions. And the differences between the current cars in this car, you, you, there's obvious differences, but things like the barge boards, incredibly strong devices for performance on a lead car, but ultimately very, very poor when they're being passed through a wake. So they're the sort of components which we kind of highlight as being um, where we perhaps should be focusing. So those, that's really where the research took us. So therefore you have a team. What size team uh, are you working with and you know, what resources do you have in terms of CFD and wind tunnel? Well, we've got a small technical team. There's five of us in the aero department. There's, there's a few other um, uh, engineers on other projects, power units and vehicle simulation and the like. But in the aerodynamics group, we have effectively three aerodynamicists and two designers, all with F1 experience, all came from teams. So a fraction of even the smallest F1 team's aero department. And we're not, we wouldn't expect, you know, if we were to, to be the 11th team and go racing, we would be off the back of the grid. There's absolutely no doubt about that. That's not our, that's not our sort of reason to exist. Um, but what we have got is enormous computational resource with our collaboration with our, with our technical partners. Um, and that far exceeds what teams are able to use. Um, we have a wind tunnel at our disposal, although most of our work is done computationally. Um, because fundamentally, if you're looking to simulate two cars, there isn't a wind tunnel big enough to simulate two cars at a sensible distance. So, um, so we've had to do a lot of work computationally. And yes, you, you, you might look on us as the 11th team, but yes, we're not in competition. We're, we're trying to work in harmony with the, with the 10 existing teams. Central to the new car is this shaped underbody, the ground effect uh, floor, as people are calling it. Proportionally, how much more downforce is that producing this year? Well, it's an interesting one. We've, we've stepped away for the first time in, in well, since the stepped bottom arrived in the in the 90s um, with a much more shaped underbody um, we've seen that as being a way of compensating for the lack of barge boards barge boards being particularly sensitive to, to driving through a wake so the performance that they gain on a lead car is lost in a following car the underfloor is much more resilient to that so you can tend to find as long as you're not feeding the underfloor with with your front wheel wake for example um, the underfloor itself works very strongly so in terms of the performance um, we've gained, it's certainly from our research, the floor is, is very powerful. The combination of the floor diffuser is a good few percentage points more powerful than the current floors. But I imagine that is where most or certainly a lot of the focus for the teams is at the moment, is to try and exploit that. So what, what you see here is, is our sort of end game in terms of our research model. What it hasn't had is all the stress of extracting performance from it to the level that a team would. 
our research and certainly I think what we hear is that the cars will be running much lower rake next year to kind of get the, the ceiling effect of these, of these, um, these larger tunnels. I think the long-winded answer is difficult to put a percentage on it, but these floors will be more powerful as a percentage of the overall downforce than the current generation. So therefore the front and rear wings will become slightly less important to get to the same end of straight speeds? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we the, these cars are perhaps a bit more, um, there's a bit less drag on these cars. The current generation of cars are of a fairly high drag. Um, there'll be a slightly lower drag, I think, you can achieve with, with this layout. Um, but fundamentally, it's all about trying to create um, a, a resilient car, but equally a car which is not generating large, um, disturbed wake for the following car to go to drive through. And will also the shapes underfloor affect how the, the balance shifts? in wake as well because obviously most of it must be the sense of pressure in the middle. Yeah, it's not, that's, that's reasonably positive for us. I mean, we have done a lot of work in trying to make sure that the, the, re, the, the car that we come up with, the regulations that we work towards, um, haven't got anything intrinsically unbalanced about them. So it's inherent that you will see a loss of performance, albeit not as near, near as large it is now when you're following. And that balance from our research is relatively well Balance. You know, it's not like we're losing an enormous amount of front or an enormous amount of rear. It's it's a it's a it's a balanced loss from the research we've done. So you've talked about the wake that the the car produces, and you've said it's very much around the front tyres, and that's probably where we've seen the most innovation, most novelties on the car with the tyre fins and the wheel fairings. How are they working to improve the airflow for the car behind? Well, one of the areas that teams are very um, it's an enormous development avenue at the moment is, is controlling the front wheel wake with front wheel end plates, front braked up furniture and barge boards. That's, those sort of three um, components contribute enormously to placing the front wheel wake where you want it. Unfortunately that front wheel wake position tends to be outboard or well away from the side pod and the underfloor, um, which makes it very difficult to deal with that wake to, to avoid it being passed to the following car. So we've had to remove some of those tools, so this, the front wing end plates are, are greatly simplified, um, specifically to avoid too much vorticity around the front wheel. Um, the drums, there's certain mandated components on the front drums, which are there to avoid uh, generating too much outwash behind the front wheels. Um, and the, barge, the lack of barge boards means that the, there's, the ability to generate the outwash is gone. You, you, you have to manage it in much more subtle ways. So they all, they all really build up to create um, a, a car which aerodynamically works in, in, a, in a wake, but hasn't got the um, enormous disturbing effect on the, the, uh, the wake that the current generation of cars have got. And the, the sort of the front wing and how it intersects with the nose, that's going to be really influential, not just for looks, but also in feeding that underbody, uh, still creating the balancing downforce. Is, do you think that's going to be something that some teams are going to come up with some quite clever interpretations? One of the big differences between this car and the previous generation was the lack of the Y250 Vortex, which has been prevalent now since 2009. Um, again, it, it went quite early on in our research because it was something that didn't really stand up to the, to the scrutiny. You know, it was one of the first things that we found was very sensitive. But, uh, but yeah, there is scope for, for length of nose, for the way the nose interacts or intersects with the uh, front wing. So I think there will be differences there. The side pods will have uh, some additional cooling louvers at the back, which gives the team some chance to play around with the Coke bottle area, doesn't it? I think so. I mean, we found that um, we wanted to ensure that we weren't just developing a set of regulations which were going to be enormously expensive, particularly with the budget cap in, in place. Mm. And we felt that although the, the, the louvers had gone over the last few years, there was scope for um, in reintroducing them in very efficient ways of, of cooling the car. Certainly we didn't see any downside from the wake perspective. So yes, yeah, so I think there's a, there's a region within the bodywork where louvers and, and exits can be developed. So um, it's reasonably tightly governed. Hopefully you won't be seeing all sorts of winglets and devices sprouting from, from various apertures. But, but yes, yeah, so I think that's a, that is a difference between uh, these regulations and the previous generation. Yeah. One of the parts that's quite tightly constrained by the regulations is the rear wing shape. Um, is there scope for teams to play about in that area? There is. We've, we've paid particular focus on the tips. Um, so really that's conducive to the sort of the whole uh, shaping of the wake. So we want the flow to roll off the top of the wing to kind of help to pick up this, this um, lossy mushroom, as we call it. Um, so that's really why some features of the rear wing uh, have been 
have been changed. Um, but equally, the section, the way that the profiles work, that, that, that's just bread and butter um, development for, for teams. Equally, the lower elements will be um, up for grabs, which is something else which, you know, there'll be a lot of development focus on trying to get the most efficient solution and obviously getting your DRS um, uh, working as, as well as you, you can. That's the point. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, will DRS be there in 2022 and will it work mechanically in the same way as it does now? Yeah, I think DRS is, will, will be there. I mean, the rules allow DRS. We did find quite early on that the benefits we've made by reducing the effect of downforce loss in following, that actually goes against you in terms of drag. So you've got less of a drag uh, reduction in following. So, so it actually enhances the need for, a, for some form of DRS. Now, as now, DRS can be tuned, be circuit dependent, but we do believe that certainly from our simulation work that DRS is, is still required. The cars will be able to follow each other in theory closer through the corners, so there'll be less reliance on the DRS in that respect. But because there's less of a hole being punched by the lead car, you will need that DRS perhaps for the, for the distant work. How is the car going to produce its lap time now? Is it that we're going to see increasing corner speeds or increasing straight line speeds? Interesting. Um, I think the cars will work very well through the high speed corners. Um, you know, certainly from when we left, when we left this car, the figures were somewhere south of what the current generation of cars are in the, in the knowledge that teams will find performance. Now, we hear rumours, there's lots of chatter that teams are making good progress. I think we were expecting if you were to race this car, it would have been a few seconds off the current pace. I would be very surprised if teams haven't extracted most of that from their ongoing development.